Right, welcome back. We're busy discussing uh, the media in South Africa. And uh, as we're having this conversation, we talk about the media and we seem to think it's just the registered newspapers and uh, broadcasters. But the reality is actually that game has changed uh, since maybe even eight, ten years ago. And an interesting question from table number 11. Is that Rejo Mpume? Pumle? Can't, I can't read your writing. Yeah, say your name for us. It's Dean. Um, thank you. It's Rehum okay. Butle. Um, my question to the panel is that how has social media impacted on uh, me uh, media freedom in SA? Thank you. And that's a brilliant question, honestly. And I first saw this when Ryan Giggs was having an affair with his brother's wife. <laughs> and the, the British media, uh, he got a gag, and the, the British media could not say his name. So we went online, and we went to a website in France, and there it was. So we can discuss this until the cows come home. But Mr. Tlorway, you, what are you going to do? Do you know what I mean? So let's answer this young lady's question because these millennials actually don't even read your newspapers anymore. They don't, they, they're getting it on Twitter, yeah? No, I mean, uh, social media has had um, a massive impact on uh, media generally and it has actually had the effect of actually breaking the barriers and liberating uh, media, the media space. Um, and it has also disrupted the market in the sense that, mm. you know, we compete with them now for advertising and uh, for audience, and the audience has now moved to, to there because uh, the audience wants to control <coughs> it to also have an impact in the content. So that has had a, a massive uh, impact, and I think it's a positive one. Uh, what needs to happen is that the traditional media has to innovate uh, to be able to then keep with, uh, the pace with um, the, the new platforms of uh, media that are there, and it's not going to be only social media. Other things, other platforms are going to come. Uh, but I don't share the view that says uh, that uh, some platforms are going to die. I think we are in an era where the audience is fragmented, and there will be more. Uh, you know, the audience is going to be more niche. You know, each sort of platform will have its own. Uh, uh, we would have its own audience mm. uh, going forward. I think people who write off certain platforms, I think, are too early in that. I think we are in an in a era where some platforms are, go are going to coexist, but I think um, the traditional media, whether you're talking television, you're <coughs> talking newspapers, radio, others, they have to check up, uh, mm. we have to check up our, 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 pull up our socks on that. Okay, so does it matter whether we have a media tribunal after all because really in social media is where the most damage to reputation happens it's not in the newspapers no, 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 let, me, let me just respond that to that quickly you know if despite the fact that there's social media newspapers <coughs> across the world are still the most trusted when it comes to um, when it comes to break when it comes to analysis when it comes to the content because there is a belief that this is this is done by professionals who know what they are doing social media you may take um, um, something that comes from social media, breaks on social media, people laugh at it or say certain things and say disparaging stuff about whatever, whoever is being talked about. But if it comes from a newspaper, it carries more weight because it, it, it is done professionally. But which is why it, it is important that we have to have a mechanism that says um, whatever regulation we do, it should be able to s entrench that um, entrench that uh, free press freedom in a pa in particular way that it shouldn't be press freedom for some. It should be pre pre press freedom across the board mm. and it should be done professionally and we force editors and journalists to go back to the basic principles of journalism. Mm. I'm getting a sense of Uber and the taxis here. I really am. No, <laughs> and no I you're absolutely right. <laughs> you're absolutely right. The most striking thing in the last few days has been that um, if you wanted to follow what was happening on the campuses, on social media it was instant, you got a range of voices, you heard the students' voices, that you noticed that there's a shift in the national debate, a very important change in the tone, the language, the attitudes. 
I mean, the, 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 the traditional media are not reflecting that, mm. frankly. So we can hassle and that's what I'm saying about us mm. not addressing the real issues. The MAT is chasing old media, mm. doing old things. It's not mm. addressing the central issues mm. that, in fact, our traditional media are not keeping mm. up with, with the switch in the national debate. Mr. Tlolo, you won't have a job next year. Um, in, 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 in fact, I'm, I'm so delighted that the ideals we had when we wrote the Constitution are coming real. When we said everyone has the right to freedom of expression, so social media have put um, voices mm. um, that we didn't have before. But, but they can say whatever our, and it's our, rubbish our, half our of the time. The only problem here is that, like in any society, there are etiquettes about how you talk to other mm. people, how you mm. behave. And I don't think that has extended to social media mm. yet. It is coming. The courts have already uh, pronounced on, I mean, they have um, uh, uh, awarded damages on the basis of what was written on social media. Yeah, but when you put a media. story that's got a million hits, who are you going to sue? Well, I think, I think there are two things I want to say about the advent of social media and its impact on you know, the regulatory space. The one thing, of course, is, is the online trolling. Uh, we've seen um, independent newspapers and media have closed down the online comment section. Media24 has done it. Mm. Um, if you look at the kinds of comments on those sites, they are incredibly bigoted, they are racist. Um, in some instances, threatening um, the contributors' lives. In our instance, a 16-year-old um, girl who wrote about her experiences as um, a young black woman growing up in Cape Town was um, viciously attacked. Um, and that set in motion an entire process in our organization to look at that. So the reason why I'm mentioning it is that whilst the internet and social media gives everyone access, it has the effect of democratizing the space, it also opens the space for abuse. And no right is limitless, as we well know. So I think the issue around um, looking at the ethics of our industry, looking at how you make people take responsibility for what they do, make sure that the stories are in fact accurate, they are fair, they are balanced. Um, those kinds of issues now extend far beyond traditional news platforms. And in a sense, whatever we come up with, the conversation that we should be having should be about how this new media impacts that situation. A lot of the, the mechanisms that we have is, are in fact old. The other thing I wanted to mention is that increasingly people are turning to the courts. Um, previously, even at the, and the, at the Ombudsman, what you have at the moment is the, the deal was if you go to the Ombudsman, you'd waiver your right to take um, the newspaper to court or the, the publication to court. The practice, I think, since about 2013 at the, at the Ombudsman has been to relax that waiver and expose existing media organizations to quite a lot of financial risk. And of course, when you go to the Ombud, you want to be prepared. And often that process is nothing but a stalking horse process. So you can have vexatious uh, complaints so that you are provoked into explaining what your strategy is. And then the person turns away from the Ombud, goes to the court, and, 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 and takes the matter further. And those are all things that um, my colleagues um, here need to take into account, uh, which is why I said it's pointless po passing, uh, talking past each other. We've got to accept mm. two things. The way in which we're doing things aren't working. The recommendation to have a tribunal isn't necessarily going to fix that which needs to be fixed. We need a dialogue that goes beyond people in power being aggrieved about what the media writes. Right. Okay, we're going to take another quick break. When we come back, we'll continue to explore this. Are we overestimating the power that the media actually even has, I, I wonder? And um, also, is it not a good thing when whoever the ruling party, whether it's the DA in the Western Cape, because they also decided subscriptions must end because the media is not happy, or is it the ANC? Maybe it's a good thing that we keep our politicians on their toes. Your thoughts after the break. Mm -hmm.